approached this subject yesterday and had um, some feedback and input from various ones. Uh, Dr. Ron Mathis has joined us this afternoon and has brought to my attention that <clears throat> this year is the anniversary of creation of the homeless coalition and has asked So that's called on the support service. 
our next program we provide is what is called prevention. Um, for those of you that might not be aware, I get these statistics from uh, our management court. Uh, we have a working relationship. Our eviction rate monthly over anywhere from four to five hundred evictions are served monthly. Um, higher so much. So we have a uh, we don't keep we don't keep we didn't get it this year, 2019-20, but we did get a grant called Convention Grant, but we still offer that program, but it's funded through uh, faith-based donations and corporations, and we still offer it. That provision program says if you if you, if only if you get a eviction notice. If you get an eviction notice, uh, we will work with the landlord and the eviction notice come from, work with the courts, and we will make sure that we try to stop that uh, uh, eviction as best we can. It's the thing about it. We never offer an individual the end time amount of the eviction notice. If your eviction notice says with fees and stuff, $1,000, our first priority is how much do you have? Um, you know, we we'll send that person away, um, telling that person to come back to us in a day or two and tell us what you have, and then we'll start from there. You'd be surprised if these individuals have, have unforgotten monies that they have. It's not the worst of them. Um, after they come up with theirs, then we'll contact Salvation Army, uh, we'll contact United Way, ourselves, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Nuba at St. Francis Center. Sometimes we may have to come out of our pocket with. Uh, today I just authorized a $525 check because uh, the only two that I could get to help you with this one was Salvation uh, Army agreed to kick in 150, United Way agreed to kick in 167, but we needed 840 dollars. But we stopped that eviction, so that's prevention. Then we have what is called rapid rehousing. Rapid rehousing is a program where I mean, if you're homeless, what is homeless considered to hood? Uh, homeless to hood is if you live in shelter. If you live in a hotel, motel that's being paid for by someone else, uh, if you're living in an inhabited places like a car or, or living on the streets, we have a lot of undocumented homelessness in the city. Uh, the city of Dallas has given us no justice with their homeless count the last three years. Uh, I'm telling you that homelessness exceeds more than a thousand people, facts. I can, I can document that. But when time for the homeless couch, we just put it done about that. Let me talk about the record we have. When they'll come to us, we can help um, them pay their deposit and their first month rent. Not all of them. Portion of it. We'll talk to these families. Uh, listen, how much of this are you going to be able to come up with? You go out and find you realtors. There are about five realtors that are working with our agency very well. Uh, Wellington, Lincoln Realtor, Diamond Realtor, uh, Reasonable Rates. Um, uh, there are a couple more um, that, that I can't misname on, but they are working with us to get these people out. Uh, we stay with these people in the Reverend Island Park for up to three months. The second month, we'll, if, need, if they need help, we'll pay a portion. Third month, it's going to cut back some more. But while they're in, all three of you, the two program printing and prevention and rapid reality, they have to come to what is called life skill classes. Because what we're doing is we got to teach them uh, budgeting skills, we got to teach them sometimes housekeeping. There are eight classes that we have uh, through our homeless agency. Uh, I can't list them all, but there are, I know there are eight because I don't know all. I want to design the classes. But one of them is budgeting, housekeeping, parenting. This other stuff that we have to teach them for eight weeks while we're teaching them, we have to find them looking for jobs. We're contacting people that we don't have a relationship with. Uh, the Pecan Factory um, uh, chaplain that I work with uh, in the police department, I'm chaplain in the police department also, but his daughter is on the personnel. She's been helping us get people on at the Pecan Factory. Uh, uh, there are other places that have said, hey, you know, we, we can help, so we have to go to other departments. So those are our three areas of, um, uh, that we focus on uh, at our agency. I know those people over here. That's what we do. And there are a lot more things we do. We do outreach uh, several times a year. We have outreach stuff like December. We have breakfast with Sound and Divide, uh, the homeless kids, Christmas. This past December, we provided 345. Homeless Kids Christmas, but we partner with other community 
individual or businesses. Uh, February, about that next week, we're partnering with uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church Grace. We have a Valentine banquet. Normally, when you hear about Valentine banquet, it'd be for us who are in, in Florida. But our Valentine banquet is true for homeless people. We go out and bust them in. We bring them in, give them a night elevator. We sit them there and feed them. Uh, that's coming up next week. Um, April, we do the last lunch. We ran the little Olympic Park. And uh, I told them Jesus could feed them with two fish and five of them. I came to. So we have a fish day in April. Uh, July, we have a back to school. We were one of the first organizations that started back to school here in the city of Now everybody wants to do it. So what I decided to do is for the last five years, I've taken my back to school program to communities that need it. Uh, we, did, we had 18 counties. So we went to Lanier for two counties. We went to Clinch County. We went to Coffee County. Um, this year, I decided I'm going to Brooks County. Uh, each year we provide more than, uh, I think this year we did about uh, 520 uh, supplies and we did 300 pairs of tennis shoes. We give away shoes. The catch to our, our school supply is the reason why I couldn't support here at Valdosta Island. We have to make sure that the individual that get this is the one that needs this. So we do what is called a registration. They have to bring in proof of income. They have to bring in proof that that child is there. Uh, and we have to be honest and verify it. And then we say you are approved based upon your income. Wherein here in Dallas, they say, well, we want to open up the pink bank in here about the program. That's fine. But I couldn't do that with HUD and DC back in us. So that's just some of the real options that we need. Right now, not that. We was getting um, we was getting DCA funding, um, DCA cut funding based upon the fact that um, they they looked at the numbers, they saw that you know our our numbers count for our homeless count said that we only had 67 homeless people, and they pretty much cut a lot of the grant and and decided to make them so they I mean they only, some people got some money but. It was for the HIV or for the domestic violence or for the shelter itself, but for convention and all of that, we did get into this time. We get ready to hopefully be a prop. Um, I have a meeting set up tomorrow with all the interested agencies that's in our office that facing homeless issues. My goal is to have a collaborative effort this year in applying for grants. Um, I have asked. Since I'm talking, I've asked the city two years in a row uh, in front of DCA and said, hey, we got this money, get the city or somebody to apply for it. We need hotel, motel to the money here. Uh, because while we're trying, we don't, have, we don't have enough shelters. We don't have enough room in shelters. So while we're trying to, uh, that's when they came out today, her daughter living uh, in her car. Uh, my church is going to pay for a hotel for a week, but the church wouldn't have to do that. If you were to apply for a hotel, motel, about your money, all you have to do is get a good plan, get a good organization, organize it right, and you have a good structure to it. So, those are some of the things we need. Right now, we are operating off of church monies and donations from corporates. Okay, well, help me, help me understand because I do hear many different numbers when it comes to homelessness. You just said that DCA says that. Valdosta's homeless number is 67. That's based on the homeless count that the city did. Okay. You're saying that the count, in your opinion, is 1,000 or more? Well, based upon my data, based upon the homeless people that come to me and I have proven, number, number one, I can't put them into my client track unless I prove that they are homeless. So based upon my data, my data shows that there are more than a thousand people that's out there that's homeless. Are you doing anything with these people for the upcoming census to be sure that they're being counted for? Um, well, yes and, and, and no. I'm waiting on a response back from um, uh, this is uh, Lucas in regards to the censor. Um, I mean, I really don't know what, what, we, what we are being asked to do. And that's one of the questions I'm asking. You know, what, what is it that we need to do make sure that we have some idea of what needs to be done with these people for the census. Well, I think for one thing, I mean, they need to be counted. 
Well, but if they're not asked and don't, and, and they're not helped through that process like anything else, they're not going to get counted. And so consequently, if there is any state federal money that's going to be able to come to Val Austin Lambs County, that's just going to be that many more that's not going to be able to get any funding. Correct. So I think certainly a start would be if the homeless coalition, and you said, you mentioned a collaborative effort. Yes, sir. I think that is where Dr. Mackey some, some concerns and some issues are is that we recognize that there is a homeless issue here in our community. It would be kind of foolish to say that we just ignore it, that it's not there. The reality <coughs> is trying to get the, the correct data and the information to have a true census, you might say, of what our homelessness is. And then not only that, what are we doing as a community, not just your efforts, but what are we doing as a community to address homelessness and give these people some help? Uh, when I asked the question, I mean, I, as you said, I mean, LAMP is doing some stuff, Salvation Army is doing some stuff, uh, a lot of other small groups, faith based group, faith, faith, yes. They're doing some too. Faith, faith. Yeah. Faith. Yeah, yeah. And, and as well as the Homeless Coalition. Um, they're all doing something, but our, well, my concern is, is that who's effective and who's not effective? Or who is being, no one, who is being benefited? And then are all these efforts truly benefiting? these homeless people and as we said we're talking about numbers that spread from anywhere from 67 to a thousand so i understand the definition of homelessness um and it can get pretty broad if you want to get that way and i hear that you're helping your prevention process that you're helping people so along those lines is there any collaboration within that community <coughs> that works on homelessness to say these are our efforts. These, this is what we're accomplishing. This is our results of our work. I'm, I'm happy to say uh, yes to that. For the last three years, uh, we have uh, we uh, activated and began uh, what is called the Homeless Task Force. Every month, the fourth, uh, I think it's the fourth Wednesday of every month, from one to two, uh, every agency that does something with homelessness, we meet at the Department of Labor from one to two. Uh, Kevin Saxon is our president. Um, but we decided three years ago, three plus years ago, that um, if we're going to be effective, we have to do it in a collaborative means. Uh, so for the past three years, we have been organizing, and we've organized ourselves to the point now where in DC have come up with what they call coordinated intake, CE, that's what the coordinated entry, what it does is it keeps uh, any agency from duplicating services to any individual that should be launching in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but it's launching through what is called the South uh, South Central Georgia Homeless Task Force. That's all of us in the surrounding areas. So what you're going to see going forward, you're, you're going to see a collaborative that's the faith-based everything. Uh, teach and all these other area organizations, they are coming on board with us because we told them that we feel that the city and the county uh, shouldn't have to decide who they're going to give monies to to do what uh, and to issue out $50 here, $500 here. If we wanted to be effective, we, were, we came up with a plan. We came up with uh, an organizational structure where we wanted to come back together. This thing called homelessness going forward. And uh, I would love for one of you all to uh, come down here to meet because we've been talking about, you know, bringing this to our city and county. We have some city people that's been coming, but we want to introduce what we've been doing the last three years. That's good. Yes, it's dedicated. So I want, I want to let you know that we have decided that we've got to do it as a collaborative group. We can no longer do it individually. We can no longer be competing. That's one of the things uh, we're meeting in the morning about uh, because the grant comes out in March. Why are we going to be competing with DCA to get money? They've already decided what we're going to get in this area. If they're only going to send us $50, they're going to need all four of us fighting over that $50. You, you decide what you're able to do, I decide what I'm able to do, and then we're able to get all the money that we can to help with the situation. Thank you. 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 Th
Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, that's been my concern, is that there are a lot of good people, a lot of good groups that's working on these efforts. Um, but it, it's kind of like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And certainly, if y'all are coming together and beginning to have those discussions, beginning to find out what your common needs are, your common concerns, then your efforts when you do request a grant or something like that, uh, then there's an opportunity there that you'll come much closer to being successful in that because everybody's on the same page. Right, right. Uh, when you have a Hayden that specializes in domestic violence, I don't need to be going after the rest of violence money just because it's available. Uh, when you have Hopper uh, uh, specializing in HIV, I don't need to be going after housing money and HIV patients when that's what they specialize in. Uh, when the shelter specializes in shelter, meaning you want to provide housing, I don't need to bother that shelter money. We specialize in, in case management, which is supportive services, prevention, and record rehousing beyond shelter. So those are our specialists. You mentioned also that, of course, you help folks with uh, their addiction notices and work as a go-between between, between them and the property owners okay. to be able to negotiate out some sort of an agreement. Um, your successes are you seeing those successes as long-term successes or is it more of a short-term because you stopped that eviction notice but then two months down the road here you are dealing with that same individual again because they have another eviction notice? The, the rate on that is one out of maybe ten is, 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 uh, is not as successful but nine out of ten are successful. But one of the main things we do just like this situation this morning that uh, I would do we're looking at, okay, how are you going to sustain? Well, first of all, how did you get it? Let's look at how did you get it. Let's look at your budget. We, we, we go through what they call a calculation worksheet. We take that calculation worksheet and we, we try to see what did you mess up at. Uh, this is what our case manager does. After we get through that calculation worksheet, we start looking at, okay, if this person was laid off, uh, what's the potential of you getting more hours? What's the potential you're going to be remaining here? Okay, well, look, can you afford? to stay here after we help you this time based upon what you have. Uh, we take everything like that in consideration. Uh, we talk to the landlords and say, you know, how, how much are you willing to work with this individual? You know, uh, that landlord, can, can you cut some of these fees off, these late fees? Uh, can, can, you, can you eat up this filing fee? We, we do all, some of them say yes, some of them say no, but we do our best to get them in and then we make sure that in the long run, this individual is not going to turn around two, three months down the road and back in the same spot again. That's one of the main things that we need to make sure we get. So you're saying you have about a 90% success rate on that? 90% success rate. Nine out of ten. Can you get any better than that on it? Could you cover eight feet on it? Yes, sir. Of those five, three to five hundred people that you've helped, that number, did you say earlier? Yes. Are those in Lowndes County or those in all Lowndes County? All Lowndes County. All Lowndes County. Um, I, to I, mean, I, was, I, was I just looked up their VCA report and they exactly yeah. six and seven of what was reported in 2017. Well, I was at the time, so that was a 52 in their report. Well, here, here, here's where the problem came in. The problem came in because, um, now, let me tell you something about it. I'm honest, and I, I don't like my tongue. Yeah, not that I didn't believe you, but yeah, yeah. That, that was poor planning on the homeless count by the city. When I say poor planning, I mean where the homeless office is centrally located is in the hub of the community where the people know we are there and been there for 25 years. Uh, you would have thought that the first organization that the city would have reached out to would have been us to say, help us with this count. Nobody on the homeless task force, because we discussed this in our homeless meeting the last year we met, nobody on our homeless task force was consulted by the city to help with the count in 2007, nor in 2018. They came to us last year, the count was in January, they approached us in December. <laughs> I'm saying, really? So it was poor planning. And then the next thing is, if you talk about doing a count, 
I, I specifically told the city, you cannot set up locations expecting homeless people to come to you for a camp. You got to go in the woods, you got to go where these camps are, you got to walk the streets. The police department is one of our biggest allies. They know where these people reside. That's what should have been done. They should have had a better uh, approach, but it was. That's why the numbers were the way they were. Just didn't have a good approach. Yes, sir. I want to come back to back to, along the lines of what I mentioned about is it the possibility of whether it be LAMP, whether it be the Homeless Coalition, playing a major role in trying to count the homeless. It sounds to me like not only would it be a benefit to this community, but it certainly would be a benefit to you to know that we've got an accurate intent. And I'm going to turn to our resident uh, census expert over here, Ms. Dukes, to say do, when you count on the census and you have a truly homeless individual, as we're talking about, that if they're living in a makeshift campsite somewhere, then how is that individual counted? Are they just counted as homeless? There's right, no so there's a, there's a way to count them. We certainly need to. Um, I think you and I already talked on the radio. There's $675 billion in federal funds that is disseminated across the United States based on that count. And, you know, we all talk about the benefits of a regional approach regardless of what it is. Um, but there's also, there's always pros and cons with that. And so I know from talking to some of the other organizations that Dr. Mathis mentioned that the word is out. Not only is sheltering kind of a shortage here, it's even worse than surrounding counties in our region. And because we do have shelters, you have agencies in other counties that are not even trying to shelter because they know if they send those people here that we will shelter them. So that means that that person was counted in another community, that the federal program money that should have gone to support that person went to another county. And now we're having to spread our pot a lot thinner than we should have because we're getting those people from outside of Lowndes County. And it, it's hard because if someone gives them transportation, gives them a bus to get a ride enough to get here, and you don't address their needs, then they just end up on the streets and in our system and a part of our problem. I and mean, once they get here, they're, they're ours. So yes, they can be counted, um, and that's part of what the Complete Count Committee is, is addressing. And I'll make sure that we get Dr. Mathis some information sooner rather than later um, so that we can prepare for that. Yeah, I think if he, had, if, if he and his collaborative group had the tools and to to and, and and to know what they needed to do to count these people, I think as an over, overall we would find that there would be some, some possibility of some help to benefit the homeless here in this community. Because if they're not being counted, I mean we're talking about the difference between sixty seven and uh, you said a thousand fifty two. Yeah. I mean that's so, that's uh, way too, that's, that's crazy wide, and there's no reason that that number is not more accurate than the that. The online response option that is being used this year for the first time, or this census for the first time, one of the positives <coughs> to that is that Dr. Mathis' staff can actually help those people be counted when they come in for services. Um, whereas before, it was very hard to count those people because they don't have a mailbox to get the census documents right. in the mail to be able to fill them out. And, you have literacy issues, um, you know, many of them have eyesight issues. It's not, you know, there's a lot of challenges there that now, because of the online, he has a bigger, a greater opportunity as well as all of our social services do to make sure that people are counted. Is there also a mechanism, not to get down into the means and methods, but is there a mechanism for going to these camps or these areas with an iPad and, sure. and the, the problem that you have is that they are very suspicious of services and people, period. And so it's hard to, it's, it's those people who come to him are saying, I need help. The people who are in the camps, we do need to make sure that they're counted. And that homeless count does influence the funding that we get. So whether their census counted or not, the homeless count, we do need to make sure that they're all being counted. But the homeless count can be the only way to capture them sometimes. Because you know, if they've got warrants, they're suspicious, they're not going to give you their, their name. It's if they're in the camp and they're not coming in for services, but they would be there. If they they'll come in if they want services. But if he just if he walks out there, I mean it's 
hit or miss. Any of us can walk out there with an iPad and, it, and they may or may not talk to us or anything. Well, most of the people that's living in the world of the camp over the last few years, we, I, I've gotten to meet with them and, and it's like, you know, yeah, and they, they, don't, they don't allow them to come in. Uh, the thing about it is, um, with the way things have been going, they, they don't stay in one place long, come maybe after they've been there a while. Property owner decided well, to clean up the spot and then clear it out where you could not see it, so they moved into where we ended it, you know, not the same. But now, here's another uh, concern that just one police asked me to check with uh, Tan Jones. She is the uh, county PSA for this, uh, our school system. Between most school systems, you know, about five, six other children that's on this. Between the city school and the county school. Yeah, those are kid children that's either staying with a relative, staying because they're not, they don't have them. Yeah, they're, they're just hopping, couch hopping around yeah, from one. You got, got quite a few in the hotel motel. You got, you got, you got a young lady that we, we, we helped about four or five months ago. She had been in the hotel with her uh, two kids and uh, her, her sons. They were so embarrassed and walk over to Wendy's and uh, but they, the city was sitting in the bus, but they wouldn't let the bus pick them up at the hotel motel. Uh, and she was, she was paying for it, her grandparents were having paying for it, but when nobody else helped, she was selling her plasma. But the only one she was selling, she was selling the other one. What is the opportunity to play around this up? What is the possibility of this group that you're collaborating with now and having those discussions? That if the commissioners through the, city, the county manager, if we could get a monthly, quarterly report of the status of the homeless in this community. Um, that we, we do that. Um, what, one of the things we want to do is have transparency, and that's one of the things that I think Kelly and um, uh, the committee that she uh, formed to organize that. We, we are formulating uh, a monthly uh, numbers as to what we can turn over and bring to the city and county government. We, we've been waiting to approach you all because we want to make sure that we had our data and information right. So uh, I, I'm going to meet with Kelly in the morning, so I, I'll tell her I have an opportunity to speak with you all. And um, we will we will have a report in our next meeting this month. We will make sure that we uh, tell everybody we need to do and bring some data so we can come together with you. That's a good start for me. Any other questions for Dr. Mitchell? Committee can 
sponsor a part of, like the round times, or, you know, or whatever, so that those folks are seeing census in places that they can over and over again. Um, you know, anything that happens after the count opens up, those iPads, just as you mentioned, or laptop or whatever, can be available there, and then volunteers can help you create that process. So I think that's a, a good place when they're already gathering for another purpose to be able to capitalize on that focus. Thank you. Thank you.